And uh, today I just want to share some things. Last week I was talking about uh, we are people of promise. And, you know, I, I also want to just share some things about identification. I believe that we've got to identify with who we really are. I'm not who you think I am. I'm who God thinks I am. <laughs> Who God knows I am. Amen. I'm a new creature. I'm a brand new person. All things are passed away. All things are now new. And God has made available to me the resources of heaven. He's filled me with the Holy Spirit and with His power that enables me to triumph over everything that the enemy would try to put at me. If we live half-baked, if we live not really understanding who we are, well then in that case we live a, a second-rate Christian life. And I believe that there's a lot of people today that live so far below uh, God's potential. So we are people of promise. We are children of promise because God has made very, very special promises to us. The promises of God, the Bible tells us, are yes and amen. In other words, He never changes His mind. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he not spoken it? Will he not bring it to pass? We talk a lot about an end time revival. We talk about uh, great things that God's going to do. And sometimes when we hear it and we hear it and we hear it and uh, we wonder, well, why isn't it happening? And we start to lose faith, perhaps. We start to think, well, that's not really going to happen. But I want to tell you, whatever God says will happen, will happen. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Whatever he says he will do, he will do. Whatever word, the word of God says it will come to pass. God says, my word shall not return to me void, but it will accomplish that which I've purposed it to accomplish. And sometimes we get impatient. Sometimes we grow weary. But the Bible says, don't grow weary. But keep believing, keep trusting, keep speaking. And in due season, it will come to pass. God will have His way. And it's very interesting that on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost had fully come. And so it was obviously a time. But these people would have been waiting and expecting something to happen. Most likely didn't expect the way it did happen, but it happened. Amen. And God came as He said He would. So the promises of God are yea and amen. But sometimes the problem's not with God, it's with us. <laughs> You know why we have problems? It's because we failed. Anybody here ever failed? Ever, you know, gone down the gurgle or got knocked about? And we do fail. But, you know, God, somehow or other, He still takes our lives and God wants to use us. And what God wants to do is He wants to break us out of that failure mentality. And the only way you can do that is by bringing the truth into your life. And you see, today... I have great difficulty. I had great difficulty. And sometimes when you go down and things don't go the way you think they should go, the, the enemy comes in with all negative thoughts, right? And, you know, but, you know, I today and you, if we could only get a grasp of this today, we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Now, <laughs> if you look at each other too much, we don't look like it. Amen. But God says we are. <laughs> I've got a giggle out of somebody. <laughs> but we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And everything that Jesus was, we are. Now, you can say, well, who do you think you are? I've got, see, the problem is, as people look like that and talk like that, I, I'm, I don't think who I am. I know who I am. We are children of the Most High God. And we've been filled with the mighty power of God. And we've got the Word of God, and we've got the anointing of God, and we've got everything that Jesus had. And you see, we've got to remember there that God, our God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. And so what we've got to understand is that that same anointing that was on Jesus Christ is now in us. That's why Jesus said, it's better for you if I go, because when I go, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit into, into this world, and He is going to lead and guide people. He's going to convince people. He's going to convict people. But not only that, He is going to empower people. He's going to allow people, cause people to rise above the circumstances and situations that so easily get around our lives. 
One of the things we've got to understand too is that this enemy, enemy of ours is one of the greatest losers or greatest failures that this world will ever see. He is a failure, amen? He had a position in the heavenlies. He was the worship leader in heaven. Can you imagine, like we long, if there's one thing I long for, it's to come into the presence of God where we worship. And friend, we've, we've, we've got a long way to go yet. But I know that we've all been in those places where we've entered into something so dynamic and so powerful where the presence of God comes down and gets around our lives and, and sort of takes all the, all the hurts, all the disappointments, all the negative stuff out and here you are, you find yourself in the presence of an almighty God and you know, but Satan was the, he had that position every day and somehow or other within him, I don't, I cannot understand it that something within him, the pride, the arrogance, the rebellion that was in him caused him to rise up. And what we're finding today throughout society and our youth and in different society, different group people, there's a rebellion that's rising up against this and against that. And people and kids are doing so stupid things just to rebel against authority, against whatever they can rebel against. But I want to tell you, rebellion is a good word. Because I want to tell you, it's time for you and I, the church, to stand up and rebel against the onslaught of the enemy. Amen. And instead of copying it and trying to make excuses for it and, and this and that, friend, I want to tell you, we've got to rebel against that thing and we've got to say, devil, you're a liar. You're the biggest idiot that's ever been an idiot. You, you had your position. You had, you had everything going for you. But today you are a failure. You are a loser and your destiny is in the pit of hell. But because of that rebellion and because of those things that were inside of him, he's trying to pour that into the world today. He's pouring out his fury. He's pouring out his wrath. He will do whatever he can to stop the church of the living God becoming who God wants it to become. We somehow or other have got to put off some stuff. We've got to put off wrong thinking. We've got to put off things that will stop us. You see, Satan himself came to a point, even in his arrogance and goodness knows what else, where he tried to stop the move of God, where he tried to stop Jesus, the Son of God, when he caused the enemy to rise up against him, the Jew Jewish people and different people there to reject him, to despise him. They nailed him to a cross, which we've heard about today, did all horrible things to him. As we heard today also that Jesus was almost dead before he would have even got to the cross. He staggered under the weight of it. But friend, he wasn't just carrying a cross. He was carrying your sin, my sin. The, the, the weight of the world was upon him. And he had to overcome and he had to triumph. And he rebelled against his feelings. He rebelled against everything that was attacking his mind. He rebelled against the words that were spoken against him. He rebelled against those who were plucking his beard. He rebelled against all the negativity and goodness knows what that was going on around about him. And he rose up and he triumphed over the devil in it. Amen. He stripped the devil of his authority, put him down. But see, if the devil would have only known what he was doing, he would never, ever have allowed that to happen he is the greatest failure that has ever failed friend I am not a failure today I'm a new creature in Jesus Christ I'm a child of God amen I, I might have made a lot of mistakes I might have done a lot of wrong things in my past but I made the greatest decision and so did you made the greatest decision that this world and will ever make more better decision than, than getting some good deal on the stock market. Better decision than getting some house at a great price. Well, I want to tell you, friends, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of, uh, of chaos around my life, 
Nancy and I walked out the front and we surrendered our life to the Lord Jesus Christ and the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty in battle came into our lives, hallelujah. And He lifted us out of the miry clay and He gave us a reason and a purpose to live. And friend, today I want to tell you, there's something that's got to stir within us again that we will go out there and we'll speak the truth. Rebellion, like we see today the rebellion that's in the world. We see kids today doing things that they really don't want to do. But there's a rebellious spirit. But I want to tell you there's another spirit that's working in this world. It's the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The spirit of life that will set us free and make us rulers and not under. Amen. That will take us above and not beneath. I thank God today that as this new creation, I've I've got the blood of Jesus Christ. I've got the anointing. I've got the presence of God flowing through my life. Friend, we just didn't, you know, somehow or other just join some sort of a club. But God said that you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. It talks about a power to overcome and triumph over the enemy. Friend, we are in a war. There's, there's, a, there's a war raging. I, I, am, I, I, I am so, you know, as I, it was a good thing for me to go out and hand out those pamphlets because sincere people were just so sincere about what they were doing. They were so, so brainwashed, so convinced that what, what they were doing was right. But, friend, I want to tell you that, that you oh, Rashaka Bundi. <laughs> How can you vote for some of the things that people are trying to do to our community, to our life? How can, how can you stand by and, and say that's okay when they're trying to come into our schools and destroy the minds of our children? When they're, when they're trying to destroy the, the, the fundamental values of Christianity? When they're trying to, to break down and, and pull down. But people are so sincere because they're so confused. And it's a spirit that's working in the world. But I want to tell you, there's a greater spirit that the church holds, hallelujah, that God wants to stir us again to cause us to rise and and be counted in this hour that we're living in. Because I believe it's a very, very important hour. See, the enemy comes and, and, and right at the very beginning of time, when, when God created Adam and Eve, the enemy comes into the camp and, and he starts to challenge the Word of God. It wasn't, you know, Adam and Eve were nothing. They were just people. But, but what the devil wanted to do was take the Word of God out. Today, we've got our government that wants to take the Word of God out of the schools. You can't do this. Political correctness says this and that. Well, friend, I want to tell you, up the nose with a rubber hose of that stuff. Amen. Amen. And the enemy's trying to steal the Word of God, the truth. And, 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 it came, and the devil comes up to Eve and says, hey, what has God said? <laughs> what did God say? And she knew what God said. God said, of all the trees of the garden, I want to tell you, Eve wasn't walking around begging for food. Eve wasn't going around in starvation mode. She was full to the brim. Hallelujah. Amen. She had everything that she needed. She had food laid on. There were trees, beautiful fruits, not just one tree, but many trees. But you know, see that rebellious thing, there's that one tree I don't want you to partake from. There's that one thing. And, and the devil immediately says, that's not what God said. That's not what God means. No, you don't need that, friend. I want to tell you, we need to live by the Word of God. Yes. We've got to raise up a standard. We're, we're, let black be black and let white be white. Amen? Amen. Let the truth be truth and let every lie be a lie. And he came up to the enemy, the, he came up and said, Well, that won't really happen. Because you see, the day you eat of it, you will be like God. And you'll know the difference between good and evil. The, the interesting thing is that what the enemy tries to say to us look, if you do this, well, you're going to get something better. You're going to have something better. It's going to be better for you to do this. But you see, the thing is, the enemy sows a lie and people think it's going to be better, but in reality, it will get worse if we follow the enemy. 
If you follow the enemy, it won't get better. It'll just get worse. Here, here are the, you know, friend, Adam and Eve could not be more like God than they were at that moment. <laughs> they were created in God's image. They were created in God's likeness. They were created like him. He was, and, and here he is, you find that, that he had an intimate relationship with them. Uh, friend, we long, I would imagine, to be able to sit where Adam and Eve sat before the fall. Can I say this? Most people that I know have more confidence in the fall of humanity than they have in the redemption of mankind. The fall has had a major effect on people and we accept more the fall and, the, and that fallen nature. Friend, I want to tell you that fallen nature that we all receive when we were born has now been dealt with, amen. It talks about that fallen nature is now dead, hallelujah. It was buried and we rose again a new person. See, we've, we've somehow or other got a, got, I am a new creature, amen. The old man was dead. It's finished. It's over. Now there's a new creation man. And this new creation man now is trying to struggle out of the, of the lies and the stuff that was put on top of it and all the, 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 the rubbish that, that I lived in for 27 years now to come out of this tunnel and start to live as this new creation man. And the only way you're going to do that is not by tolerating, it's by rebelling against the works of the enemy. The enemy wants you to do this and you say, no, I will not do that because it's not of God. I'm going to raise, I'm going to raise up a standard against that thing. Right. Don't get sucked into it because you go in. You know what I found that when you do get conned, anybody here ever been conned by the devil to do something you know that's wrong? Come on. I'm not looking. I've got both hands up, amen. I've been conned. But when you get conned, all you do is condemnation comes upon you. Shame, all that stuff. And the, the joy that lasted for a second is now taken over by weeks and days and months of misery. You don't have to just get so excited because I'm preaching so good. <laughs> but we've got to raise that standard up. We've got to come against the lies of the enemy. Because you see, when the enemy gets hold of us, he's, he's got us. And I want to tell you that Jesus wants to set us free. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that's in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he is a new creation all things have passed away. I have made all things new. I'm a new creature in Christ. I still have done some silly things, but I thank God that the blood cleanses me. Today, I'm a brand new man. All things have passed away. I have a destiny and so have you. We are not failures or mistakes. We win by virtue of the blood of Jesus Christ. Not because of how smart I am or anything like that, but I win today by virtue of the, of the blood of Jesus Christ. We are winners because we are made brand new. The name of Jesus, the Word of God, the power of the Holy Spirit now flows through us. Amen? And it's got a purpose. I believe that God wants to help us. These guys could never have been more like God than they were right then, but the enemy came. The book of Luke, Luke tells us how Satan came to Jesus later on as he was starting his ministry and he was tempted by the enemy for 40 days. He hungered. And here he is in a situation here where, where a ministry has been birthing. I want to tell you, friends, when you want to do something for God, the enemy will come to try to stop you. 
You've got to understand that. I'm not trying to speak negative. I'm not trying to lift the devil up. He is a loser. He is a defeated one. He is broken, but he goes around now with the power of suggestion and suggesting to people you'll never make it or you'll never win or you'll never become or you'll never be. And friend, when you get that inside you, you you fall victim to that sort of thing. You've got to fight that thing and say, no, that's not what God says about me. I am a victorious person. And the enemy comes and here is Jesus. He comes on the scene. He's, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He goes into the wilderness where he's uh, fasting for 40 days and for 40 nights. Where he's, where he's hungry, obviously. He comes in there, but the enemy comes in and starts to speak to him. And, and, and says, if you are the son of God. Straight away, he's challenging his identity. Friend, I want to tell you today, somehow or other, you and I must realize I am a child of God. Amen? Friend, to be honest with you, the answer to our situation is so simple that it confounds the wise. I am a child of God. If you are the Son of God, if you are a child of God, do this. Now Jesus turned around and he used the word of God against the enemy. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word proceeds from the heart of God. We know that the enemy came again. He's trying to steal the purpose. He's trying to steal his identity. We know he took him up to the high mountain. We know this and we know that. He was there trying to steal it from him. But Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. But I want to tell you, when you start winning some victories, when you start pushing aside that stuff and start identifying with who you are in Christ, who I am, I, I am a child of God, hallelujah. I've been filled with His Spirit. I've been washed with His blood, glory to God. I've been transformed. I've been changed. I've been taken out of the kingdom of darkness and I've been brought into a brand new kingdom, the kingdom of His dear Son. And friend, out of that, out of that realm that we can grow and we can develop and we can move and have our being. If you are the Son of God. But Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost was on Him. I want to tell you, friends, every time you win a battle, I want to tell you something on the inside of you starts to grow and you grow and you begin to grow and you begin to fight. But I want to tell you, every time you go down the gurgler, you get weaker and weaker and weaker. But when you stand against the enemy and you say, that is not right, I will not allow that to happen to me. I will fight you. I will, I will win. I want to tell you, you'll grow in power. You'll grow in strength. You'll go, grow, grow, grow. Hallelujah. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit and He made a declaration. I want to tell you if there's ever, ever time the church needs to make declarations, it's the hour that we're living in right now. Because I want to tell you the enemy will come in like a flood, but I want to tell you God wants to raise up an amazing standard against the enemy. And Jesus stood and he took that Bible and he started to read the Scriptures. And as he read it, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me. I want to tell you that would have sent echoes through, uh, through the chambers of the enemy. Amen. Oh, he's not dead. He's alive. Glory to God. He is risen. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, when the church starts to stand up and declare, the devil will get the shock of his life. It will send him there to the dispensary. He will be looking for uh, Penadol and, and what do you call it? Oh, Valiums and goodness knows what else. Because he'll say, oh my God, they're alive. People think we're dead. I want to tell you, friend, the spirit of life has got to come on the inside of us. Take authority and smash down every stronghold of the enemy. And here is Jesus. He spoke the word, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God has anointed me to preach the gospel. Oh, what an amazing thing to bind the broken heart and all the things that God said, that Jesus said He was going to do there. Friend, I want to tell you, we are not part, we might look at ourselves as a church here, but I want to tell you, we are bigger than this. Hallelujah. We are part of a, of a church that's called the kingdom of God. Amen. Today, there are literally thousands upon thousands, even millions of people today gathering under that name and I'm shoulder to shoulder with them. Hallelujah. We're, we're part of it. This is a part of the vineyard, but we are part of a great move of the Holy Ghost. 
There, I want to tell you, I've, in my lifetime, I've seen some things. I've seen a move of God in Iraq. I've seen a move of God all over the world. I've been into, into places like Poland. There's a man there that we had that, that we were in relationship with there by the name of Leshek. That wasn't his real name, but that was what he was. He was a Jewish man. Born again, spirit-filled, amazing man of God. And he was, he was feeding over 500 Jews in Poland every day. What an amazing thing that this man was doing and business money was coming in his way. Everything was happening. And I had the privilege of being with this man. It was a very, very miserable time. It was so cold there that snow was uh, piled up about eight or 10 feet high. It was, it was freezing. I've never been so cold in all my life. But you see, in Poland, the earth freezes to a depth of five feet deep. One and a half meters. It, it freezes. You cannot dig. You cannot plant. You cannot do anything. And in, in Poland, the Jewish people that were living in Poland were the lowest of the low of the low. The people, the other people in Poland could do whatever they liked. They could abuse them. They could exploit them. They could do whatever they liked. And there was no authority in Poland that would do anything about it. They were just the lowest of the low. Some of these people were actually uh, Holocaust survivors. And you see these people, old people, and, and there was one couple, there was two sisters that lived in this little, little uh, room there. It was so cold that they were freezing to death. When they found them, they were just sitting in a corner waiting to die because they were freezing to death. They had no heating. Their windows were smashed. They, they were actually trying to stuff paper in their windows. I met these two ladies, now gloriously saved, gloriously touched by the Holy Spirit, amen. You know, friend, I want to tell you, God is no respecter of persons. God can move wherever He likes. And I don't, don't know anywhere that would be harder to move than in Poland. But I want to tell you, there's a move of God in that area, amen. People, God raising up people. Friend, you've got to find your purpose and your destiny. You've got to find where God wants you to be. And you find that and you start to work it and you start to move in it. I want to tell you, God will do amazing things in your life. I met a man by the name of the heavenly man. He was a Chinese man. He was gloriously saved. He was a gang leader, a rebellious man got put into jail. But when he got into jail, he got gloriously saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. Wherever they put him, they put him in a cell. And within a couple of weeks, every person in that cell would be born again. Here they put him somewhere else and they were right because they were just worshiping and singing praises to God. They put him in another cell and those people would get filled with the Holy Spirit and saved. There was a move of God, friend. I want to tell you, you've got to rub shoulders with some of these people that are having a move of the Spirit. And in this jail, because of, of his activity in that, they smashed both of his legs. They said, we'll stop this man. We'll stop this thing. They smashed his legs. And while he was in prison, with these broken legs, he said there, the Spirit of God came into that jail and, and the, an angel of God came in and raised him up and says, rise to your feet. You know, friend, your mind will be the biggest enemy that you'll ever have when the Spirit of God comes to you. Because you see, how would you ever be with broken legs in a prison, surrounded by bars, and an angel comes beside you and says, stand to your feet. The first thing that would come to your mind is, how can I stand to my feet? My legs are both broken. But you see, friend, that's where the battle is. You've got to rise up. You've got to stand up and say, God, whatever you said. See, there's people here that God wants to use you in an amazing way. And if you don't rise up, if you just say, I can't do that, it's impossible because you've got a hundred reasons why you can't, but I've got one reason why you can because He rose again, triumphant or His foes. Hallelujah. God is waiting for the church to rise up. And this man, he said that he began to stand to his feet. And as he stood, he said both of his legs became totally whole. And he stood there strong. And then the angel of the Lord says, come on. And he started to walk with him. And as he came to the prison door, the doors opened. And then he came to the gate, the main gates. And the main gates opened. And, as, and he thought, my God, what's going to happen now? And there was a cab, a taxi cab waiting outside. Most probably had John driving it. <laughs> Frank, I mean. <laughs> And there he was. <laughs> I woke you up, didn't I, Frank? 
<laughs> had a big day, I know. <laughs> but nobody sleeps in my meeting. <laughs> There was a cab waiting outside and Frank behind a whole shaka and away they went. He now lives in Germany, I believe. Friend, you've got to come against things there that will come against you. When Nancy and I first got saved and, and we were just loving Jesus and doing our thing and I, and, I, and I spoke to the Lord, I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Friend, I want to tell you, when God speaks to you, you've got to do what God tells you to do, Amen. And I want to tell you, because you, you, what I'm saying is, I don't know where I'd be today if I hadn't have taken that step. Did that make sense to you? I don't know where I would have been if I would have said, God, I can't do that. Because I've got no education. I've got no formal, I'm not, I've not been to Bible school. I've, I can't do that. He asked me to gather, go up and down the street and gather the children of our street. And so we, we did that. I said, okay, let's do that. And we did it. And within a couple of months or whatever it was, we had 75 children at our house, all praising Jesus, getting saved, and goodness knows what else. And in the midst of that, then God, through Clark, asked me to come on staff as a, as a Sunday school teacher. And you just take one step at a time. In the middle, midst of that Sunday school that we, were, that we had in Brisbane, in the midst of that, it was revival going on there. Kids were getting saved every week. And in the midst of that, the, my, somebody, the lot fell on me to come and start the, plant the church on the Sunshine Coast. That was so far out of my thinking. I had no intention. The kids I can work with, but not adults. Man, I've seen them. They're mean. They're tough. <laughs> Kids are good. But friend, I want to say this. Your mind will be your greatest enemy. And we've got to learn to rise up. You've got to learn to rise up and you've got to start to do what God's told you to do. If you get a word from God, friend, this, pulpit, this platform's open. You can come up and share what God's saying to you. you got, if there's something going on, let's, let's come on. I, I want to see you rise up, amen. I don't want to see you sitting around getting fat. <laughs> Jesus first. Him only. He said, I'm going to build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I'm going to build you. I want to build your life. I want to build you. But friend, come on. You've got to take that first step. Your mind will be the greatest enemy. It will try to stop you. John, he spoke to John. He said, John, who, who are you? He said, I'm not the Christ. I'm not the one. I'm, I'm not even worthy to carry his sandals. The one who's coming after me. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Well, who are you that we can go back and tell the authorities? He didn't say, my name is John. <laughs> he said, I am a voice. I ought to tell you today, I am a voice. Rush <laughs> I am a voice. Hey man, come on. Are you a voice today? Come on, I want you to hear you say, I'm a voice. Come on, I'm, come on, let me hear it. I am a voice. I am a voice. Hallelujah. I am a voice. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Come on, I am a voice. That's who I am. That's who we are, amen. We're a voice. Father, I just ask you today, somehow or other, you stir us up. Come on, Holy Spirit. Do a work in us. Renew my mind, my heart, my soul. Set me free that I might be everything you want me to be, hallelujah. That the world will know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. So I'm a new creation, brand new man. Friend today, let me just ask you this. If you have trouble with your mind, if your mind is trying to dictate to you and control you and tell you you'll never make it, nothing will ever change. I'm going to open this altar today and believe for God to somehow or other drop something deep in your spirit. It will triumph over the thoughts of the natural man. As a natural man, tries to put us down but there's a spirit man that wants to put us over just want you today if you like that 
Just come and stand in His presence. Stand in His presence. I can, I will do all things. Our mind, our mind, our mind, our mind. I know God's talking to people here. There's a way of escape, friend. It's through the cross of Calvary. Not any other way, but through the cross. Would he be by? Spirit of God just spoke to me then, I believe. And there are people sitting back there, and you have said in the last 24 hours. This will never change. You've said that in the last 24 hours. You've said this will never change. You're snared by the words of your mouth. I believe God, you know who you are. Just come. 